We live in a world run by technology. It shapes how we live, move, and learn. But technology creates a divide, and when you're on the wrong side of that, you get left behind. Tech has increased the gap between the haves and the have-nots. Access to technology is key. This is our number one issue, closing the digital divide. Right now in the United States, indigenous people like me are far less likely to own a computer or have high-speed internet access than any other ethnic group. So I decided that instead of being left out of the tech world, we should be the ones building it. So I'm Ojibwe from the Sault Ste. Marie Band in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. That's always been a part of who I am. I've always been very interested in how things work. I remember when I was younger, I would take a lot of appliances apart. Like, how do these things go together? Uh, definitely a little too nosy sometimes, too. <laughs> when I got to high school, I had a lot of learning challenges, and so I really struggled with math. I always convinced myself I couldn't do it until I stumbled upon a robotics team. I found myself learning everything from design to electrical engineering to computer science. And then on top of that, it's so cool. But I was kind of met face to face with this robotics kit. It cost $500. And that is a lot of money. My family struggled to afford robots. And when I saw how so many kids who had a lot of funding get so many opportunities, I was like, this is not fair. The gears like started turning in my head. I started experimenting and teaching myself things, testing things, getting new parts. And after I graduated, I invented my first robot. Its name is Ecker. Every kid gets a robot. It's made out of recycled plastic. It's got little hexagon wheels. And kids are able to assemble, wire, and program the robot for like less than $20. Okay. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our motors and we're gonna line it up with our chassis like this. See, look, oh, it looks so cute. <laughs> And so what happens is, is when we put this on a battery, see it spins. Oh, that's cool. That is cool. Who wants to test it out? I started a nonprofit called The Steam Connection, teaching classes, starting robotics teams. Oh, so like it's all metal, so it connects to Yeah, that. it's conductive. There's metal in here. And you can make them spin, you can make them go forward, you can make them go backward. Kids are as excited as I am about the robots. How do we send things to the brain? You are going to code them at home. Here, I'm going to show you how. But as I continue to work with kids and teach more classes, I realized that the greatest need for these robots was within my own community. I often feel like I exist within two different worlds. I live in so-called America, but I'm not American. I don't see myself that way. Being Ojibwe is who I am. But often I feel like I have to be something else to exist in the world. Things like our language were criminalized up until recently. Now let's pick up with the English list. On the pony. Grandfather. That's better. Happy birthday. My fear is that our future will not include our culture and our voice. And so this year, I'm creating a robot for indigenous youths. And the goal is to have the robot speak to students in their languages.
Good morning, ACES Conference attendees. Give yourselves a big round of applause for being here. Look around this room. It is because of you and the desire you have that can help our people to survive and continue to be resilient. Um, yeah, what's your last name? Boye, B-O-Y-E-R. Okay. So the ACES Conference is a tech conference for Indigenous peoples. I'm actually here right now to launch a new robot called Scobots. This right here is a speaker, it's magnetic, and this is actually what's inside of the robot. I've been working on it for a while with volunteers to my organization. Yeah, sandwich, iron on one side, solder on the other. We were up late programming and getting everything assembled and put together. Yeah, I got like no sleep last night. <laughs> Hello. The goal is to get the support that we need to be able to bring robots to more kids. Oh my gosh, it's so nice to meet you. Yeah. Okay, what have you got there? It's a language learning robot. It teaches kids indigenous languages. Wow, that is so and cool. And I match it. We have a Taino one, a Navajo one, and then this one's Ojibwe. Oh my gosh, so yeah. cool. You're the one that makes the robot. Yeah. So what does it do? It's a language learning robot. What? Yeah, it's for indigenous languages. We had such a great response from people. They were taking pictures of it. All right, I'll do things. Asking questions about it. How does it work? See, it goes, it, it's like that. See? I would love to connect with you and so oh. we can connect oh. out. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. We have so many people now from ACES who want robots for their schools and classrooms. I was like, oh my gosh, we got to make even more happen. So since the ACES conference, we have gotten so many requests from indigenous educators and in schools to send the robots to their classroom. And that is really awesome, but we absolutely cannot meet them right now. I mean, I make all the robots here and pretty much make them myself. And so I'm always working. <laughs> I work every single day, over 15 hours a day, on the steam connection and on the robots, and there's only so many that we can make right now. I sometimes just fall over <laughs> and fall asleep wherever I'm at. It is definitely a lot. I've always felt very intimidated by the business process. Things like marketing and social media, business planning and finances, I don't know really how to do all of this. And so finally I was like, Danielle, like you cannot do everything alone. You're gonna need help. One of my team members encouraged me to apply for MIT Solve for the Indigenous Communities Fellowship. I was fully expecting to not make it any farther. And then I did. <laughs> So, what is your big dream for Every Kid Gets a Robot, the future of it? My biggest dream is for every Native kid to have a robot. And, um, yeah, it's a big dream, a big goal, an expensive goal, but that is, that is where I'm going towards. SOLVE is an initiative based out of MIT to support entrepreneurs around the world who are doing amazing work by and for their communities. We had over 1,500 applications, and we wound up having 35 solvers. I'm so curious, what does indigenous robotics mean to you? Well, I think it could look like many different things. It I'm a member of like the Navajo Nation, and device, I work to support our indigenous yeah. entrepreneurs and innovators. Absolutely. All right, let's come in. <laughs> Perfect. This is like my um, workstation right here. I have things like breadboards to work on the circuits, and I have a bunch of robot wheels here. Awesome. So with Danielle, she's incredibly passionate. She just loves what she does. So that's my chaotic thinking brain right there. But for Native peoples here in the U.S., it's not just about passion. We really need entrepreneurs who are able to support our communities. And I soldered out the base of the chassis 
and stuck the electronics in it. I think that for Danielle, she has eight different ideas for really amazing robots. But at the end of the day, it's about, okay, how do we make this scale and how do I raise capital? And so that's one thing that I really think Solve will be able to help support her with. So I'm here for the MIT Solve event. Thank you. I'm trying to recruit more funding to be able to expand our manufacturing so I can build more robots for the schools and classrooms. But I don't do a lot of like formal pitches, so I, I'm just totally nervous. All right. Anin, hello, my name is Danielle Boyer. My goal is to get a robot into every indigenous youth's hands, and so... What are your biggest needs or holes that you could use advice or support on, whether it be, you know, capital or other types of capacity building support? Yeah, so we're kind of at a turning point. A lot of it is down to funding to be able to invest not only in the manufacturing of Ecker, but also the expansion of the SCOBOTS. And so, yeah, right now we're looking for about $150,000. That's what we're looking That's, for. That doesn't sound like a whole lot of money. We can offer some financial assistance. That would be um, awesome. And get the word out. That's awesome. Thank you. And then I work for General Motors and I lead all of our STEM education grant making efforts. I know that if we were to connect with our volunteer employee engagement team that we would be able to at least share out some opportunities. Funding is one of the most important challenges. And so to be able to have people say to you, this can happen, that's a huge relief. So what does it look like when you have something that has always been in your hands, but is now going to be in other people's hands, and you have to rely on other people? I am ready. All right. All right. <laughs> So I have one, two, three, four, five, six that need to go to one, one classroom, so we're going to put six in here. Yep. So because of the funding I've been able to get, I've been able to make more robots than ever before. Whichever fits best. Usually I do it with this pointing up so there's space. So recently I had this amazing tribal school in LA reach out to me. They were like, hey, we need robots. Come quick. I had no idea that they even knew about what I was doing. So I was just blown away that they wanted me to come. <laughs> I ended up making the most robots I've ever made in my entire life. We had over 120 robot kits on the floor of my workshop. I was so excited because bringing robots for indigenous students has always been my biggest goal. So this is the only public indigenous school in all of Los Angeles. You know, the majority of our students come from struggling families. We're talking about 85-90% meet the poverty levels and the reality of a day-to-day -day is a struggle because our parents can't afford Wi-Fi. They can't afford a computer. On top of that, for Indigenous children, if you want to get into math, science, engineering, you simply don't identify. In all these fields, less than 20% are women, and out of that, how many are Native American, Indigenous? Very few. Our youth could not see themselves as those professionals. And to us, that was a huge problem. Okay, hi everyone. <laughs> Good morning. How many of you have built the robot before? All right, so let's dump everything out on the table. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our motors onto our chassis. 
and we can control the direction of the robot based on which color we use on the battery. The coolest part is to see her explain the robots and show all the different equipment. Then it was just like, wow, like that makes robotics and STEM seem so much more accessible. So you'll just put three rubber bands on each wheel. And can someone tell me why I would add rubber bands onto a robot wheel? Yes, traction. For our students, never had they ever had an opportunity to make a robot, to hold the pieces. So not only are they learning how to solve the issue of you got all these parts, what do you do with them? Danielle also says, look, I've had all these barriers. I'm just like you, but here I am. Look at what we can do together. All right. Three, two, one, let's go. There are a bunch of geniuses. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Being able to see the students have all the robots working was the best feeling in the entire world. <laughs> Let's have a round of applause. <laughs> Children need to belong. They need to feel that their culture is important. So being able to access role models like Danielle, it's extremely valuable. So have any of you soldered before? All right, let's try it. So with Danielle, we see her make her way into STEM on her own accord, doing what she wants to do and using her own cultural beliefs. I see her as someone that I can look up to and someone I might want to become in the future. It's all the risk. Mm -hmm. But also such a big inspiration for my community, especially with like the SCOBOTs and language revitalization. And then next is Notoka. Notoka. And that means my name is, and you say your name. SCOBOT. <laughs> I feel like this one would go too, because it's a black. Oh, yeah. You know, I think our knowledge is often dismissed. We're not seen as what we know is valid. Oh. <laughs> okay. But I think science and technology is what my people are and is what we know. And so technology should be made by us for us. That's how ears work, huh? <laughs> if you can extend your hands like that. Thank you. Danielle, we're so honored by your visit today. You represent hope to our community. You represent the best of our community. You represent all that we can do. Thank you. Miigwech. Thank you. People have this idea that indigenous peoples exist just in the past, but we're still here now. And to be here, seeing the work that they're doing brings me so much hope and joy for the future. You know, our people have been inventors for thousands and thousands and thousands of years before colonization. That was taken from us, and we're reclaiming that. <laughs> and you never know what the future is going to look like. Thank you.